everyone, it's Alyssa here from my kitchen for week 12 of our CSA box with Flocktown Farm and the green team. Um, take a look at this gigantic heirloom tomato that I got this week, one of three. I got three of these, they're beautiful. I also got the, um, the little cherry tomatoes, the rainbow carrots, the assorted colors of bell peppers. I've never seen a purple bell pepper before and that's what I have this week. And in my little oven, I have some of my golden beets. They are kind of steaming and roasting in there. I've made a little packet of tin foil and I added some water in it so they'll kind of steam in there. You'll see what we're going to do with that a little bit later. My recipes for myself this week focus on the beets and this right here. Um, but I know that there was also corn in the store, um, some jalapenos, um, were there jalapenos or maybe that was last week? There are definitely like a lot of assorted peppers, maybe shishitos, um, and a corn, a squash, different kind of corn. Um, I like the email that they sent out this week about being corny. Acorn squash, it's a winter squash, but they're starting to come out like their fall winter. Um, I love love that season of squash. It's my favorite. So I'm looking forward to getting acorn squash, but I know some people already got it. Um, the first recipe is for the acorn squash, and it is from my America's Test Kitchen TV show cookbook. And this is a really simple uh, just way to roast up your acorn squash. Uh, it's a quick roasted acorn squash with brown sugar. Um, and so all you need is butter and dark brown sugar, a little bit of salt to balance out that sugar and to highlight the flavors of the squash. And you just um, roast your squash with some salt on it. And then, um, while you're, when you're all done, you make, you coat it with um, a sauce made of the butter, brown sugar, and a little bit more salt and then you kind of broil it so it gets a little brown, your sugar caramelizes. And this is pretty much how my family cooks our acorn squash all the time. We do some brown sugar, maybe a little cinnamon. We keep it really simple because when it's roasted, the acorn squash is so good. So give it a try. Um, it's gonna be a little bit cooler this week so you can turn on your ovens and do some roasting. All right, so that's that one. Um, I have, Another Jamie Oliver book, I know we've been using the Seven Ways ones a lot, but this one is Ultimate Veg. And let's see. Um, oh, there were some potatoes this week too. And I know that in the store for purchase, I think there have been mushrooms, or you can go get some mushrooms, but this is a potato and mushroom al forno, so cooked in the oven. Um, and this also uses onions, garlic, um, some eggs, some cottage cheese and Parmesan cheese to kind of like bake it all together. Um, and it's basically just kind of like a, a nice little egg bake. There are eggs and you kind of mix everything all together, but it's an interesting take on, um, what to do with your potatoes and bake it all together. Then there is, um, a Hasselback al forno again for the oven. Uh, basically it's just all sorts of root vegetables and you roast it up and then he has a recipe for, um, it looks like like a wilted spinach and lentil that you can serve it with. So um, for example, he uses parsnips, butternut squash, onion, beets, carrots, potatoes, um, and then he seasons it all up, garlic, thyme, um, and then makes his lentils uh, also served with yogurt. So I'll show you, it's just, Everything is all roasted up. And he uses that Hasselback method, which is making these thin slices, which helps everything cook. And it also gives you lots of crispy edges. Uh, let's see what else is here. A double corn salad. So this utilizes your fresh corn on the cob and you get it nice and charred. You can do that on the grill. Um, there's something intriguing about this. What is the other corn? It's popcorn. I kid you not. This recipe uses popcorn in your salad. It's a really interesting little salad. 
and you use your crunchy iceberg lettuce and a creamy cheese dressing. Um, so yeah, you're gonna pop some corn, plain, plain popcorn. He suggests doing it yourself in a frying pan. Um, and then you season it with some Tabasco. Then you're going to sear your corn that has been cut off of the cob, or you can even sear it, or like I said, grill it while it's still on the cob and then chop it off. Um, and then the cheese is cheddar cheese, blue cheese. You're also gonna add some plain yogurt, garlic, mustard, vinegar, Worcestershire sauce, cilantro, make your dressing, put this all together. If you still have um, any green beans or you wanna go out and get some more, um, it's an angry bean salad and it's a great way to use these nice little pints of tomatoes. So it's, it's basically just your, um, it's called angry bean because it's got an arrabbiata dressing. Um, arrabbiata is like spicy, hot. Um, so it uses fresh red chilies as well and some garlic. So it's just a saucy little cooked up boiled beans and tomatoes. And this one uses a lot of different things that you can get in the box or in the swap store. This is an avocado and jalapeno hash brown. So it utilizes your cherry tomatoes, your, it, they are roasted and blistered. And it uses gold potatoes, scallions, your jalapenos, avocado, Parmesan cheese, eggs, cilantro, and a little bit of lime on top. So I'll show you, it's just like a little breakfast hash here. And you can see those, those blistered tomatoes, wonderful. So ours aren't on the vine anymore, but you can leave the greens on top and roast them. It looks really nice. Okay, so that's that cookbook. The next one is, it's a Mary Berry cookbook. This is Mary Berry every day, make every meal special. I know there, there are multiple kinds of beets, I think, that were available this week, and she gives a recipe for making a hummus out of your beets. Um, so you're gonna cook your beets and then peel them. You use chickpeas, garlic, cumin, lemon, olive oil, um, and season salt and pepper. So just a really simple way to use it if you don't love beans, but you love a dip, you love hummus, so give that a try. This I'm going to make Later this week, I have some chicken breast in the refrigerator. I have some goat cheese right over here, and I'm gonna use my red peppers to make chicken breast with red pepper and goat cheese. Um, so you, you cook your chicken breast, and is it stuffed or is it just on top? I think it's just on top. Yes, so you're going to fry your peppers, and then you're going to add in an onion marmalade or like a chutney, or you can caramelize your own onions if you don't want to do that. And then you have your chicken breast on your uh, baking sheet, and then you cover it with this um, goat cheese, onion, and uh, bell pepper mixture. And then you add some breadcrumbs on top and paprika, and you bake it, and you just have this wonderful little chicken bake here. So that topping there is just the breadcrumbs, your onions, and red pepper red bell peppers, or I'm gonna use my purple ones or yellow ones, whatever you got in your box. And you just bake that all up. Um, this one sounds good. I know that there's no fennel anymore, but you can go get it at the grocery store. In my continuing war to tell everybody that fennel is delicious, um, this is a fennel and watermelon salad and a goat cheese bruschetta. And the real reason why I'm using this recipe, um, we don't have watermelon this week, we don't have fennel this week, but um, you use these beautiful tomatoes to top your toasts for your bruschetta. You can see it there in the corner. Beautiful, fresh tomatoes are gonna make this perfect. Uh, but it's just a, um, she gives you a recipe for a nice dressing and then the recipe for the bruschetta, which is your tomatoes, some thyme, your goat cheese, garlic, um, and then, oh, I can hear the steam. I can hear the steam in here. I can hear everything sizzling a little bit. Um, and then your whole salad is just different kinds of lettuce, 
sprout mix, cucumber, watermelon, onions, and fennel. Okay, and what I'm going to make for myself, well, one of the things that I'm going to make is this beetroot salad with mozzarella and basil. Look at how simple this is and how beautiful, and if you have multiple colors of beets, it's a very pretty presentation here. But I only have the golden ones. Um, and then all of these little cherry tomatoes, and those I have, you guys, I have all different colors of those. So those will be my colorful additions to my golden beetroots. And then just some olive oil, basil, really simple. The part that takes the longest is steaming and cooking these beets. And then I'll have to peel them as well, but that's okay. So that's one of the things that I'm going to cook for myself tonight. And then I'll do the chicken later on this week for myself. Um, the next cookbook I have is uh, from The Whole Smiths. Uh, it's a really great food blog that I love. This is Michelle Smith's The Good Food Cookbook. I actually own a different cookbook of hers, but this one comes from the library, but she has another one. It's called Real Food Every Day. I'm looking at it right now. It's holding up my camera. Okay, let's see. This is great, I love this. It's great for your bell peppers. It is a spicy tuna stuffed bell pepper. So there you go. You use the bell pepper as a vehicle for your tuna and there's avocado and cucumbers in there. It's topped with some sesame seeds. And then another use for these beautiful slices of tomatoes that you can get is an egg salad in a cucumber boat. So I'll show you, you kind of hollow out the seeds from your cucumbers and then you do a thin slice of tomato and you line your um, little cucumber boat and then you stuff it with some egg salad. So again, that highlights just how fresh and delicious these tomatoes are all on their own. For the beets, you can spiralize your beets and you can make a salad out of it. So she has a recipe for a spiralized beet salad um, with a nice dressing of Dijon and balsamic. Uh, again, just creative ways to make new salads and use your vegetables. This also uses goat cheese, beets and goat cheese. They go really well together. The goat cheese is tangy. The beets are really earthy. They um, just have this sort of opposing flavor, but the goat cheese is also kind of a little funky, so it goes with the earthiness of the beets. Also roasted root vegetables. So this includes beets, but it can also include your carrots that you have, um, parsnips, onions, or shallots. You can use all of these things or only a few of these things. So if you don't want to go out and get parsnips and onions, you can just use carrots and beets, whatever you have, or just beets or just carrots. Um, and it's just a really simple roast. So some of the recipes that I share with you, they're basic, but maybe you don't know a great way to roast your vegetables or what to pair them with. So she gives you some seasoning and tells you how long they need to cook for. Really simple, but really delicious. Um, and then this is the other use of beets that I'm going to do tonight. It's just, again, super simple. Beets with honey and pistachios. I don't have pistachios, but I'm going to roast up some sliver almonds that I have. Um, and so it's just your beets that you have um, cooked, same as what I'm doing now. A um, little bit of olive oil. Um, goat cheese, pistachios, thyme, and honey. So again, I would never have thought of this flavor combination, but it makes sense to me. So I'm gonna do that as well. So I'm gonna put these two to the side for me to refer to, and these I'm done with. I'm going to check on my beets and see if they are fork tender, let them cool, and then I will peel them. And then we're going to come back and very easily and quickly dish this all together. My two preparations of beets for today. So if you're stuck and you don't know what to do with your beets, come on back and see what we do with them. Okay, so my beets were roasted until I could stick a fork in them. That means that they are fork tender. And then the skin was really easy to peel off. So now I'm going to do my two dishes. The first one I'm gonna do, so snacking on this giant tomato while I was waiting for it to cook. Little salt, little pepper, so good. 
Um, so now I'm going to do the one from the Whole Smiths first. So super easy. Um, you know, both both cookbooks have really nice presentation, but I'm just putting everything in a bowl for myself. So I'm going to chop up my beets, and then I'm going to do some goat cheese. This is just plain goat cheese because we're going to add our flavors ourselves. There are all sorts of herbed goat cheeses and such that you can grab, but I'm just doing the plain goat cheese. Just doing like some little, little chunks here. Let it kind of crumble up. supposed to be pistachios, like a nice dry roasted pistachio. I don't have that, so I'm going to do a little almonds. You can toast them if you want for that roasted flavor, but we're just looking for something a little nutty. Some thyme, if you have fresh thyme, even better, but mine is dry, so I'm just going to do a little sprinkle of that. Some salt. I'm using the coarse salt because I like that with these sorts of plain vegetable dishes. I like to get that little bite of salt, just a little bit. Some olive oil and then the honey. Okay, a little bit of good olive oil. Just a little drizzle over top. And then the honey. Nice little drizzle, honey and goat cheese. What a match made in heaven. So I'm curious to see how it goes with the beets and the thyme as well. Okay. Okay, so this is the first beet dish. I'm gonna give it a try. I'm gonna try to get all of the elements in one bite here. Mmm. You know what's an interesting combination? The olive oil and the honey. They're almost competing at first because the extra virgin olive oil is so strong and so is the honey. But when you get it with the beet, the earthiness brings it all together. Very good. And you definitely need the thyme. You need a little bit of some kind of herb. Very good. This is so good, I can't stop eating it. Okay. The goat cheese is perfect. The honey is sweet. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gonna put this to the side so I can finish it after I do the second one. Okay, so I just did a little swap here. Um, this one is the Mary Berry uh, beet and tomato salad. It's almost like a caprese because it's got the tomatoes, the mozzarella, and the basil, but the beets add a unique layer of flavor. So we'll see what that does. So I'm cutting my little cherry tomatoes in half. Okay, so now we are to toss with some salt and pepper these tomatoes and olive oil. So again, I'm using a coarse salt. You can use a regular table salt, but I like the little zip of salt. A little drizzle of a good olive oil again. Okay, I'm gonna give this a little toss to make sure that my tomatoes have tons of salt and pepper on them. They're all coated. And I'm gonna do my slices of my golden beets. I'm gonna cut these in half as well. Get a couple of those on board. Complete our color with just some fresh basil leaves. You're just going to shred them and sprinkle that on top. So a nice, fresh, colorful plate. Okay, so now I'm going to give this a try. Try to get a little bit of everything. Those seasoned tomatoes, the basil, the cheese. Not a dish that I would have ever dreamed up myself, but that's why we're using cookbooks, right?
very interesting because the beets are so earthy and the tomatoes have a little tang to them and the basil is so fragrant. I'm actually surprised the combination of the basil and the beet together, it brings out a certain kind of sweetness. It's a very interesting um, little harmony there. This is really good. It's very surprising how sweet the beets are compared to the tomatoes and the basil and the cheese. It's so interesting how the flavor profile of this is completely different from the flavor profile of the beets with the goat cheese and the nuts and the honey. And even though that has honey on it, literally to sweeten, the beets are just very earthy in that dish, probably because of the goat cheese, they play in harmony together. But this, because everything else is so bright and fresh, you can really taste how earthy the beets are. And instead of clashing, it creates a little sweet harmony. That's really cool. The basil doesn't have a very strong basil flavor. It just kind of coats with sweetness. Wow, that is so cool. Probably add a little bit more salt just on top. Um, I know I mixed it in with the tomatoes, but I would add a little bit more salt on top just to finish. Um, that's it for me for this week, for week 12 of our CSA box. I hope that everybody got their newsletter in the mail. Our newsletter for September and October just came out and should have come in the mail uh, probably over the weekend or on Monday. If you didn't, we have plenty of extra copies at the library and we have updated our website with all of our new programs and events for September and October. So come on over to the library and say hi and check out everything that we have going on for the fall, including more CSA videos as we get into some of our fall veggies. All right, everyone, I'll see you next time. Bye.